choose Lidl. Weather on WLRFM, brought to you by the vacuum cleaner spring clean trade-in deals at Kelly and Dollard Electrical Superstore in a Ring Road, Waterford. Continuing cloudy and misty with further outbreaks of rain, heavy at times this morning. However, it will become drier and brighter as the day goes on with some sunshine and just isolated showers. Highest temperatures of 10 to 13 degrees in moderate to fresh southeast winds. AM brought to you by Mulligan's Pharmacy. Giving you rewards with your health and beauty purchases every day. Falter over Ash, welcome back to the programme. Now, in its last two editions, the Hot Press magazine has been running a series of articles on what they claim is the fluoride scandal. On this programme last week, we met Dr. Joe Mullen from the expert body of on fluoride and health. And the, the Hot Press magazine has been carrying research done by a person on the other side of the argument, and he is scientist Declan Waugh. Now, just to, if you haven't been up to, or rather if you are not up to speed on this, just let me give you the introduction that Adrian Murphy, the journalist whom we met on this program from a Hot Press, gave to the last of these articles. It read, in the last issue of Hot Press, we interviewed scientist Declan Waugh about Ireland's policy of mandatory fluoridation of the nation's water supply. There's been a huge public reaction to the story with people from all corners of the country making contact to register their opposition to the policy and to thank Hot Press for taking up the story. Now some of the claims made by Declan Waugh in that article are that most of the developed world does not fluoridate its water. 97% of the European Union is non-fluoridated and only 11 countries in the world do more than 50% of the population drink artificially fluoridated water. These are the Irish Republic 80%, the US 64%, Australia 80%, New Zealand 62%, Singapore 100%, Hong Kong 100%, Israel 70%, Brunei 95%, Malaysia 75%, Guyana 62%, and Chile 70%. Britain fluoridates the water of just 10% of the population, Spain fluoridates 11%, mainly intensive fluoridation of the Basque region, and there is effectively no difference in rates of tooth decay between Western nations that fluoridate their water and those that do not. Now, at my first, the guest that we had on last week was, as I said, Dr. Joan Mullen, and basically he took to, to, to task most of uh, Declan Waugh's findings. And I said to Joe just towards the end of our discussion, our interview with him, would he be willing to come on this programme and, and speak with Declan Waugh on these very issues. We contacted Declan Waugh. Both parties have agreed to do so. And now will we enter into the discussion? So we say good morning. Uh, first of all, to scientist Declan Waugh. Good morning, Declan. Are you there? Hi, Billy. How are you? Welcome to the programme. Thank you. And good morning, Joe Mullen, Dr. Joe Mullen. Hello, Billy. How's things? Very well indeed. Now, uh, you'll, you'll understand, Joe, that I will have to give uh, the first position on the programme today to De Declan because we haven't heard from him before. Good morning, Declan. Hi, Billy. Now, can you give us, just give us the basic thrust of your argument against mandatory fluoridation? Well, if you don't mind, Billy, I'd like to first respond to the comments that uh, Joe Mullen said in your radio show earlier in the week. Because okay. um, in the very first part of his interview, he claimed that uh, Ireland does not have a high incidence of cancer and that the health statistics for Ireland, which I've identified in my report, are not true. And he actually made the statement, which I found was slanderous in many respects, that my report was based on nonsense. Now, I've sent your radio station information from the WHO and other organizations showing the disease burdens in Ireland, mm -hmm. which you have, I presume. At this yes, day. I have it here in front of me. And it shows that Ireland, Ireland has the highest incidence of cancer in Western Europe, that there's only one country in the whole continent of Europe that has a higher incidence of cancer than Ireland. We have the highest incidence of prostate cancer, the highest incidence of female colorectal cancer, the highest mortality for diseases of the blood, including severe amino deficiency. We have the second highest mortality from rheumatoid arthritis in the EU. We have the second highest mortality from musculoskeletal disease in the EU. We have the highest incidence of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma for females in all 27 EU member states. We have one of the highest, we have the highest rates of uh, ovarian cancer in Western Europe. We have the highest mortality from ischemic heart disease in the, EU, in the EU. We have the highest death rates from chronic pulmonary disease in the EU. 
We have the highest mortality from respiratory uh, diseases in the EU. We have the highest incidence of sudden infant death syndrome in the EU. We have the highest incidence of Down syndrome in the EU. We have the highest obesity in the EU. And we have one of the highest levels of epilepsy and ADHD in the world. Uh, no, he claimed that when it came to cardiovascular health that we were one of the better countries in the world. I'd like to quote from the Department of Health's own report published in 2010 on national cardiovascular health policy where they state that Ireland, when it came to uh, ischemic heart disease, it was higher than the EU rate of 80 deaths per 100,000 and higher than the EU 27 of 101 deaths per 100,000. And regarding premature deaths from uh, ischemic heart disease, we were higher than the EU 15 and higher than the EU 27 average. And they claimed in their report or stated in their report that we are notably behind our EU counterparts in both length of life and disability-free uh, years of life. Now, on top of that, um, the Irish Heart Fact Sheet, Mortality from Cardiovascular Disease, a report published in 2007, also claimed that while death rates had declined in Ireland uh, over the period 2000 to 2004, Ireland had on average 144 deaths from CHD per 100,000 of the population, which was higher than the EU 15 and higher than the EU 27. And the World Health Organization published a report where they looked at what they call dailies, which is the age standardized disability adjusted life years. And for your readers, that basically looks at um, uh, the number of lost life years from premature mortality and the number of years living with uh, chronic disease. And for those figures, Ireland came out the worst in Europe as well. So uh, my facts are correct with regard to the health statistics in Ireland. We are in a, when it comes to health, in a chronic situation, and it's getting worse. And, all and do you put all of that at the feet of the mandatory fluoridation policy? What I Surely it's multi, multi multifactorial. That what I have said in my report that the, is this, that mandatory fluoridation in Ireland has resulted in an increased exposure of the population to fluoride. And uh, in, a, in a recent, very re two very recent reports that have been published, um, water fluoridation chemicals have been identified as endocrine disruptors, low-dose endocrine disruptors. And uh, one of those reports was just published in December of this year, uh, by two on uh, it's actually a WHO and UNEP report, but it was published independently by a group of international experts. Uh, and the second report was published in an endocrine journal, um, uh, where he ident in uh, let me see exactly where he identified water fluoridation chemicals as again a low dose endocrine disruptor. Now, how that works in the context of human health is um, when you have endocrine disrupting chemicals, according to the report that was published, which is called State of the Science of Endocrine Disrupting Chemicals 2009, 2012, it affects metabolic disorders, reproductive health, immune function and disease, thyroid-related disorders, bone disorders, neurodevelopment disorders in children, and hormone-related cancers. So when you look at hormone-related cancers, for instance, the fact that Ireland has the highest incidence of, of ovarian cancer in the EU and the highest incidence of prostate cancer in the EU is of great concern to me. And if we are putting, which we are, an endocrine-disrupting chemical into our drinking water supply, there is bound to be a link between the high, highest incidence of those cancers in the EU and exposure to those chemicals. Okay, can I bring in Dr. Joe Mullen on this? How, now, Joe, how do you respond? I say what I said before, it's nonsense. And I, was, uh, I didn't realise now that you were going to take the opportunity for people to send in information to you, because if I did, if I knew that, I would send you no, the documents. No, I'm going to quote this, this was but, totally, but, hang on, this was but, totally unsolicited. It oh, just, absolutely. It just came in. I mean, I Sorry, I didn't take the opportunity is what I'm okay. saying. Right. But what I will say to you then is I will refer to reports here and I will tell you what they are and your listeners can go and look them up and download them. The sickest population in Europe thing, 
Okay, there's a document, the OECD, Health at a Glance 2012. These are the official statistics for Europe. Ireland has a relatively good life expectancy above the EU average, also has recorded the greatest improvement in mortality rates of any EU country in the past decade. It has the best self-reported health in the EU, one of the lowest with long-standing illnesses. It shows relatively low or modest levels for most conditions. We are at the higher end for cancer, but we are not the worst. And there are several non-fluoridating countries that have higher rates than we are. Particularly Who are they, Joe? Can you mind telling me? What Denmark, are they? Denmark, Norway, France. Um, yeah, these, I'm afraid depending, you're wrong. Depending on, sorry, 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 Billy. Billy. Yeah, sorry, I mean, he Billy. didn't interrupt you, Declan, so in fairness, yeah. let Joe have the airwave just the, for a the, while. This is a problem sometimes, I think, with these kind of things. You know, it takes a long time to respond to these kind of wild allegations. So I think, you know, I need to be able to do that without interruption. Okay, we'll give it the so, same amount of time. Okay, so basically, that's the OECD health at a glance. They're saying Denmark, Norway, France are typically either you know, at the same level or higher than Ireland. These are countries that do not fluoridate. What they have in common with Ireland is that they do certain types of screening for cancer. We have a very high prostate cancer level. We have the highest detected rate in Europe, but that's because we do a thing called PSA testing in Ireland, which they don't do in a lot of countries. Mm -hmm. Now, prostate cancer is unusual because uh, prostate cancer can come in different forms. So there, there are aggressive forms of it, which can be clinically diagnosed in somebody's lifetime. And then there are less aggressive forms which are typically only diagnosed post-mortem in a lot of countries and they do not appear on the prevalence and incidence rates in countries. In Ireland we do PSA testing almost you know anybody over 50 now going to uh, the doctor will have suggested to them that they have a PSA test done and this is one of the big differences that we have. Countries that have similar kind of levels of PSA testing like I say the Nordic countries actually show the same kind of thing. So that's the cancer thing. Now, I think it might be worthwhile quoting uh, the Irish Cancer Registry and what they had to say about this, because these are the people who produce a lot of the reports, and these are the experts. And they mentioned, in response to some of the things that Declan was publishing, they say some maps contained in an all Ireland cancer ad published recently by the Cancer Registry have been used erroneously by anti-fluoride groups to suggest the link between water fluoridation and cancer and they go on to give three reasons then why they say that there isn't all right the first reason is there is no good evidence to link fluoride levels in water whether natural or added to cancer risk the international agency for research on cancer has concluded that the relationship between cancer mortality and incidence and both natural and artificial fluoride in wa drinking water has been investigated in a, in a large number of descriptive epidemiological studies of population aggregates carried out in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Norway, the United Kingdom and the United States. None of these studies provided any evidence of an increased risk from fluoride in water for cancer. Number two, the maps that they published showing uh, differences in cancer rates in Ireland and in the Republic and the North, we say across the island, they say these maps do not show a clear difference between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. But for a small number of cancers, there is a smooth gradient in cancer risk from the northeast to the southwest of, the, of Ireland, increasing right across the island. There is no evidence of a change in the gradient at the border, except for prostate cancer, for which differences in PSA testing rates are the obvious and accepted explanation. Three, although the bulk of the population of the Republic lives in cities and large towns where the water is fluoridated, most of the area shown on the map is sparsely populated and much without fluoridated water supplies. So water fluoridation cannot be suggested as an explanation for any of the uh, pattern scenes seen. Now, th th these are the cancer experts. And what they're saying is that there is no relationship whatsoever from the international literature or from the patterns that we see on surveillance data. So that's cancer. Now, there was a number of other things that Declan mentioned there to do with, and maybe I'll just go through these one, one at a time. Uh, he mentioned there about cardiovascular disease. Again, there's three documents I'll refer you to there. One is the OECD Health at a Glance 2012. Second is the Eurostat Health Statistics published by the European Union. And third is a document published by the Institute of Public Health, which is a cross-border public health uh, body made up of public health specialists on both sides of the border. These show that in Europe we have the fourth lowest stroke mentality rate, with the 15th out of 27 EU states for ischemic heart disease mortality rates, and we actually have lower cardiovascular disease than they have in Northern Ireland. 
now. Then we go on to other kind of things, almost musculoskeletal things. You mentioned rheumatoid arthritis there. And just if you get the figure for that here, it turns out that the uh, on musculoskeletal diseases, uh, I will say that there's a report from the European Union as well. It's called the Musculoskeletal Health in Europe report, published in 2012. Ireland actually has the lowest reported musculoskeletal pain in the EU, one of the lowest levels for diagnosed osteoarthritis, we're mid-level rate for rheumatoid arthritis, we have the fourth lowest rate of hip fracture and osteoporosis in the EU, and we have the eighth lowest daily as, as you know, this, this uh, total burden from musculoskeletal disease in the EU. We're low to, uh, we're, we're at the lower end of the scale with all these things. So again, I will send you in these reports and links to these reports. These are official EU and national statistics. So who do we believe then? Well, with, with all due respect, you know, um, what I'm saying is, is what's supported by the WHO, by the European Commission. And by, like, it, 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 the WHO was mentioned, the World Health Organization was mentioned here. Uh, they are enthusiastic promoters of water fluoridation. They don't just say that they approve of it, they actually recommend it. You know, particularly for developing countries, they certainly, where, where there are much larger dental problems than there are now in some of the Western countries. So WHO approves it. There have been seven or eight major international reviews of the literature carried out in the last decade alone. Uh, in the 1980s, the same guy, Robert Knox, who did the epidemiology linking smoking uh, to cancer diseases, he was involved in, in one of the, uh, in, in a research at the time. Okay, but can I, put, can I just put a question to Declan? Sure. Declan, might it not be, okay, okay there, is the, there is perhaps the fluoridation issue, but when it comes to the causes of any of these diseases that you're talking about, isn't it simply a case that there are many factors involved, not just the drinking water being fluoridated? There are many factors involved, yes, Billy, but let me just get back to some of the points there that Joe mentioned, right? He's talked about the National Cancer uh, access report published by the uh, both the National Cancer Registry Ireland and Northern Ireland Cancer Register. Now, their official report, right, their official report states that the risk of developing many of the cancers presented was higher in the Republic of Ireland than in Northern Ireland. The risk of non-melanoma melanoma skin cancer, melanoma, leukemia, bladder, pancreas, and brain central nervous system cancers was significantly higher for both sexes in the Republic of Ireland. For men, the risk of prostate cancer was higher in the Republic of Ireland, and for women, cancer of the esophagus. And, and did the report say, well, or give is, reasons for this? That is a quote straight from the report itself. Okay, but did it go on to say, well, here are the reasons why this is the they case? They never examined or looked at the fact that the population in the south of Ireland are exposed to higher levels of fluoride in Northern Ireland. It was never even examined in their report. Now, Joe said that the, the, Irish, that the Irish cancers, that the National Cancer Register Ireland had said that there was no significant difference. Now, their report specifically states that there is a significant difference. So that is a complete contradiction of terms. So can I respond to yeah, that? You may. Mm -hmm. I never said that they said that there wasn't a difference. What they said was there is a difference, but they're saying that the cause of it isn't fluoridation. You said it was not significant. No, I didn't. I didn't say that. I said What I said was that they've reported that there's differences across the iron for a small number of cancers. That's what they say. It's more than a fact, small Billy, number of cancers. Billy, sorry, sorry, one second now. Billy, you can actually look this up online. If you, if you just Google National Cancer Registry and, and fluoridation and the same thing, you'll find their statement. And what it says is that this data has been used erroneously by anti-fluoridation groups to suggest a link between water fluoridation and cancer. Now, they, they couldn't be plainer in what they're saying. Now, so, in regards to that, Joe, have I used that data myself? Are you an epidemiologist, Dick? Have I used no, that no, data? No, no, no. Are, are you an expert in this? No, These are the experts. You, you These are the authors uh, of the report. Have I used that data erroneously? Yes, you I have. I have not actually referred to, in my latest report, I have not referred to or used those maps, and I have never used them. Well, so can, I, can, 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 I, can I can I put a question, to, a different question to both of you? Uh, Joe, sorry, Declan, I think it, it would be only fair if you did ask, answer rather that question. Are you an epidemiologist? I mean, what are your credentials? I'm not an epidemiologist. Okay. Are you a scientist? You are. I'm a scientist, yes. Okay. 
All right. And can I come back to you, Declan? Sorry, Joe, I, I, I beg your pardon. Now, I'm not calling into question the bona fides or the professionalism of anybody involved in the reports that you are quoting at us, or to us rather, there. But there might be a body of opinion that might be suspicious of them because they are official bodies, so to speak, or, might, or professional bodies, uh, who might say, ah, but they would say that, wouldn't they? Because there are, quote, unquote, vested interests uh, in the background here. All right, so well, here, here, we, here we go right into the conspiracy theory. Well, no, let, let's look at it this way, Joe. No, no, right? no, hold no, on. Uh, Joe, sorry, ask, sorry, I put that question to Joe, Declan, please. Well, in, 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 yeah. in, in, yeah. No, no, in, sorry, in, Declan, I put that question to Joe, let him answer it, please, Joe, yeah. I mean, th th this is the conspiracy theory kind of angle that we would yeah. say that, wouldn't we? But why? I mean, like, like let me put my situation to you here. Um, I live on a fluoridated water supply, so does my family. I don't have any qualms about it. Do, do, do you seriously think for a second that, that I would put my health at risk or my family at risk on a point of principle or something. I mean, that's, that's just crazy. I have no vested interest in this. I, I don't know anybody who has a vested interest in this. I mean, it's not exactly, you know, it, it's just, I, I, I just don't understand. I mean, you could, it's, if you kind of buy into the argument that uh, that officials are kind of hiding uh, data or something like that, well, I mean, you know, in, in all honesty, uh, that's not what I understand as public service, and I'm a public servant. Okay. Declan. Well, Joe works for the health board. He's a representative of the health board on the expert body. And the health board is the organization which not only endorses, but promotes and pays for water fluoridation in this country. So, of course, he has a vested interest. And the other individuals that are sitting on the expert body who are working within the health boards as well are hardly going to take a position against their employers with regard to water fluoridation. Who okay. are the That's not necessarily the case. Surely to God, if you came to a position philosophically or even morally uh, uh, that you came across in your day's work for the HSC or for whatever body you might be on, that you might have to stand back and say, well, I, I have to go against the grain on this one. Okay, can I give you an example of where that's happened recently? Uh, yeah, sure, John. Okay, there was, there was the vaccination program there for the, the threatened flu epidemic. Mm -hmm. um, now, the health authorities strongly recommended f vaccination and there was a mass vaccination program carried out. It subsequently uh, emerged that a small number of children had been damaged by that vaccination and, and got a, a thing called narcolepsy, a very, very small number of people. There was no attempt to cover that up. There, there, there was no attempt to deny that. You know, so public health officials are not there to kind of protect their own interests. They're there to protect the interests of the population of our families and of the citizens of this country. And to suggest otherwise is just, a, is disgusting. Declan? Um, there are a few points I want to address here with regard to this. We're nearly up on time, by the okay. way, so... One, uh, Joe talks about the OECD reports there a while ago in terms of people looking for information. The information that I have used in my reports, which you have seen, comes from the WHO database, and it is precise, and it is accurate data, and it is the only information that I would use with respect to the data that I've included in my report. It is accurate, it is scientific, and it is published data. But can I ask then why no, does, hold why on does on the WHO... Okay, right? okay, okay. I would like to give an example in terms of independent reviews that were done on water fluoridation, a very recent one done in 2008 in Hampshire County Council with a population of 1.2 million people. Now, they did, a re they did a review of water fluoridation, brought in independent experts, and they came to some very basic conclusions with it. They found that adding fluoride to drinking water has the potential to result in an increase in moderate to severe fluorosis in communities. They found that there, were, there may be harms other than fluorosis as a result of adding fluoride to drink, drinking water. They found that the plausibility of other serious health impacts from the fluoridation of water reinforces the view of the review panel that a precautionary approach is needed until such time as additional research has been done. It is a serious concern for the panel that despite the point being made repeatedly in the literature uh, that there is that there is a, a complete lack of credible research undertaken to examine the wider health implications of water fluoridation. They found that the evidence has not been provided to demonstrate that adding fluoride to water equates to individuals receiving an optimal therapeutic dose. They found that individual exposure will be affected by the addition to fluoride to drinking water as well as other sources. And they found 
that there was concerns regarding infant formula with regard to the exposure of infants to fluoride um, by consuming infant formula milk. And for all those reasons, they took the precautionary approach and decided not to pursue with fluoridation in that county. Joe, right, can, I, can, I, can I just answer? Yeah, briefly, and then I have a final question for you, Joe. Okay, first of all, they are proceeding in Southampton. The public health authorities are proceeding with fluoridation there. The thing that, uh, you know, if a group called Hampshire against fluoridation comes up with a report like that, it's I think not, it kind of tells you... Sorry, sorry, report, just, just uh, Declan, excuse me. They are proceeding with fluoridation in Southampton because I was talking to one of the health officials from there only last week. So I know that they are going ahead with that. Now, as regards to WHO and the accuracy of Declan's figures, you asked Declan earlier, is he an epidemiologist? He isn't. He's giving his interpretation. And the big question is then, if what he's saying is right, why did the WHO actually promote fluoridation? They don't just accept it, they actively promote it. They're more than happy with it. Okay. Been, so, so, sorry, go ahead. Uh, basically, t- t- similar questions. One listener wants to know, why is fluoridation mandatory in, in, th- in this country, right? And secondly, when, when you have all this talk about the ill health of the nation, why not enter into an experiment whereby fluoridation would stop right across the nation, say for five, six, ten years, and then some kind of survey could be done as to whether the health of the nation has improved or disimproved further? All right. Okay. A test think- case. Yeah, do you want me to answer that? Yes, please. All right. First one, the reason why it's mandatory goes back to the, the original act in 1960 and the discussions before that. Basically, the decision was that Ireland, um, the, the water supplies in Ireland are too interconnected between the different local authorities to make decision making at local authority meaningful. So, for instance, if you had a situation in Dublin, for instance, where Dublin decided they didn't want to fluoridate, it effectively made the decision for Kildare and Wicklow and a few other places as well. So, what they said was there has to be a national policy because simply because of the structure of the water supplies in this country. So, in other countries, what they do like in, in the UK, it's, it's left up to local authorities, but the local authority population sizes in the UK, uh, you know, 